thank you. Thank you for being here today, PVMCIers, and those who are visiting, and those of you who are broadcast world partners who are watching us and watch us diligently every week. We thank you for being here today. I have something for you today that I think is for you, but I know it's especially for me. I've got some stuff that I want to talk about today. We've made our proclamation today. And I want to talk about some things before we get into the word today. And, and I think it has to do with our choices. We make choices. And the choices that we make could very well mean how we stand with God and how we stand with each other. We make a choice to hate. We make a choice to fight. We make choices to forgive. We make choices to disagree. But even though we disagree, we must still walk in love. We make choices to help. We make choices to come together. We make choices to argue. We make choices to be angry. And that is a choice to be angry, by the way. And I'm one that makes a choice to stop being angry all the time. If that's you in this building and you have an anger problem, it is a choice. And we make choices to be peaceful. We make choices to be violent. We make choices to love, which is my last one I wrote today concerning our choices. And I hope that you have made a choice to love today and not be violent and not be vulgar toward each other and fight God in what he's trying to do with you or what he's trying to do with me or what he's trying to do with us. But all these are choices that we make each and every single day. Choices. And I want to dedicate this one to one of my old bishops, old teachers, Bishop Virgil Patterson. He used to always say to us, he said, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. And when he, saw, when he sees this tape, he's probably going to chuckle because he said it to us all the time. It is a choice. And everything that we do is exactly a choice that we make. Every decision that we make, it is a choice. And he was absolutely right. And I had no idea that it would rub in, and he said it for seven straight years, it's a choice. And, it, and, and every time he spoke to us, every time he spoke to all of us, he would say, it's a choice. And the things that we do, he is exactly right. It is a choice. It is a choice that we make to do it. It's a choice that we make to do the things that we, that we do and say the things that we do. It is exactly a choice. You are right, Bishop Patterson. It is a choice. So, so today's message when I was writing today's message, today's message would be so called, it's a decision. It's a decision. And everything that we do is a decision that we make. Depends on what we do. It is a decision. But I don't know what your decisions are and what you plan to do with the decisions that you make. But, but the decisions that we make can have a it can have an avalanche effect or a trickle-down effect. That's what I'm looking for. A trickle-down effect. A decision that we make today could affect everything that we do in our lives, whether it be positive or it be negative. And we have to be watchful of the decisions that we make because they can have trickle-down effects to great parts of our lives, the decisions that we make. And as we know today, a lot of us have already made some heck of a decisions already that we're paying for today. Some of us have made decisions that have been great for what's happening for us today. But I'm talking about all the decisions that we make today. And those decisions that we make today, I've made some great decisions when I was a young man that, that has followed me for 21 years. <laughs> some of y'all might know what I'm talking about. But, but, but some of you has made, have made those same decisions that it wasn't intentional. But it was a decision at that time that I made that has affected a lot of my life. And some of the decisions that we make affect our lives. And, and, and I wrote down all of those things because we can make a decision to be who we want to be. We can make a decision in our minds and in our heart to be peaceful. We can make a decision in our minds and heart to be warriors. But many times we take warriors out of text. We think that warriors is a person or is a person or supposed to be a person that's supposed to fight everybody. And every time somebody comes against you, you're ready to fight. That's not a warrior. That's not a warrior. That's a mess starter. 
that's somebody who loves trouble. But let me tell you something. If you look for trouble, you'll definitely find it. It'll find you, and, and it has great consequences depending on the decision that we made. So I'm personally making a decision to stop being angry. How about you? Uh, uh, those of you watching, are, are you making a decision to stop being argumentative? I got that written down right here. To stop being argumentative about everything? Because cause that's not a peaceful spirit. Are, are you peaceful inside? Because many, many times the things that come outside is proof of what's on the inside. It reflects an inner man. It reflects the stuff that's really on the inside of us. On how we act on the outside. And we can say, well, you know, I, I came up like that. You know, you know um, it, it, my mother was like that. You know, my grandmother was like that. My father was like that. My grandfather was like that. But just because they were like that, does that mean you have to be like that? Just because grandma was Medea, you don't have to be Medea. Because, because, because when I look at Medea, she, she didn't have a man because she was, she was the man. <laughs> and just because grandma was like that, you don't have to be like that. And that's a decision that we make. And, 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 and because grandma and, and because grandpa was a whoremonger doesn't mean we have to be it doesn't mean it doesn't, it doesn't mean that so, so we have to make a decision to not be like where we came from because if we make a decision to be like where we came from we're going to end up with the same results but then how, how are we going to be different from where we came from if we make the same decisions that they did because we think it's in our history or in our family lineage. Just because cuz was a murderer doesn't mean you have to be one too. And that's a decision. Just because nobody wanted to have a college education in your family doesn't mean you don't have to have one. And that too is a decision. It's a decision that we make to do something different than what our forefathers did or family members did and that is a decision that we make and our decisions are very 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 important got something for you today from Paul I want to go into some scripture today I, I talked a little bit to warm you up for this scripture I've done this batch of scripture before I love it but I've done this batch of scripture before wait a minute I left some stuff out I'm hoping today, for those of you watching, and for those of you who are in the studio, in the church, I hope today that in this message that you hear something, it's a decision. Remember, we all are in this thing for Christ for the greater good. You know what the greater good means? The greater good means that you have to sacrifice to do the things of God. And many times sacrifice takes some stuff off of us. And we got to take some stuff to sacrifice for God. Sometimes you got to stay a little longer for those of you who like to work. Sometimes you got to stay a little longer to sacrifice for God. And the sacrifice means that you're taking something away from yourself. Remember, we're all in this for the greater good. To serve Christ. That is our number one motivation for those of you watching. Number one motivation. If you are with God and you are serving God, it is our number one motivation to serve God. And that too is a decision. We can decide not to serve God or to serve God. But if you decide to serve God, it's going to be a great sacrifice that comes with serving God. Including losing friends and family and all kind of folk who you thought had your back and loved you until you said you were serving Christ. Now you don't have any friends. And probably don't have any family left. Because folk walk away from you when you say, you know what, I'm with God. Whatever, dude. I'm going to tell you what. It's going down. We about to turn it up. You need to be there like we always do. Well, well, you know, I don't do that no more. Well, what happened to you? What did they do to you down there? Did they hypnotize you? Did they brainwash you? Come on, man. Come on. Get the, get the VO, baby. Get the VO. We need to turn up. Well, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make a decision to change around my life. But, but, but in that decision comes a loss of people. 
When you make a, no, no, I'm not talking about the fake lip service decision. Remember in, in, in the offering when we talked about a decision and, 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 and we talked about lip service. I love you, but I truly hate you. So, and, and that's lip service because when you love somebody, you truly show it. It's a decision to love. It's a decision to fight. Let me get you into some scripture today. We got some strong scripture today. I've done this batch of scripture before, but I want to do it again. It's a decision to do God's will. The struggle between two natures is our conversation today. The struggle between two natures. If you've got a sword, if you've got a sword, I want to crack this sword and begin to go into some words. I'm on a schedule today and I want to get something inside of you in this schedule that we have today. And, and Paul talks about in chapter 7, Paul talks about in chapter 7 of Romans. He talks about chapter 7 of Romans, about a struggle of two natures. And let me tell you something, even in that struggle of two natures, and for those of you watching, there is a struggle of two natures that happens in every single one of us. And I don't care who you think you are in Christ, there is always a struggle between two natures. I don't care who you think you are in the world, there is always a struggle between two natures to do the right thing and to do the wrong thing, to walk in love or to walk in hate. To kill or kill, steal and destroy like your father or walk in love like your father. I want to go into chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 starting in verse 13. When Paul talks about a struggle between two natures. Now, I keep referring to Bishop Patterson out of California. We were there for seven years. And I used to always say, it's a decision. And, 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 and in my younger days in ministry, I used to get mad when he said that. What you mean? What you mean it's a decision? And then when I got older, I found out, you know, we have to, some of us have problems deciding. We go in a store, especially you ladies, never go shopping with a woman. Which dress you gonna get? I'll tell you what, I'll wait at home till you get finished deciding which dress you want. I've been, been in here for seven days already waiting on you to make a decision for a dress. <laughs> Some of us have a hard time deciding. Somebody begs to differ. I don't take that long. Yes, you do. Look at your clock. <laughs> Look at your watch. If there's a man with you any place, he has a scar on his face like, because he don't really want to be there. So... <laughs> But, but it's a decision and everything that we do is a decision. And Paul talks about there is a struggle between two natures that happen inside every single one of us. And I've done this, this gaggle of scripture before starting in verse 7, starting in uh, chapter 7, starting in verse 13. I've done this gaggle of scripture before, but it fits what we're doing just right today of a struggle of two natures. Hallelujah. I'm going to begin to read so we can expound on some scripture today. And, and 7 and 13, Paul writes, he says, Was then that which is good made death unto me? Question mark. God forbid. Was then that which is good made death unto me? Question mark. I have to do it right. God forbid, he says. But sin, and that's also a decision. I decide what I want to get into. Somebody in here say, I stumbled into it. Lies and garbage. You knew what was going on way before you got there. Right, right, right. You knew what you was going to do before you got there. Right, right. Somebody said the devil made me do it. Lies and garbage. He, he keeps on taking all these props for stuff that he know he had nothing to do with. It was all of us. We knew what we were getting into. Let's keep on reading. Let's, let's keep on reading. Let's keep on reading. Because the decisions that we make will be a trickle-down effect to everything that happens to us in the rest of our lives. The decisions that we make from our hearts and from our minds we make a decision to love even though most folk don't love us Amen. now that's a decision because it's not easy to love folk who hate your guts it's not easy to love folk who purposely trap you up in snares it's not easy to love folk who purposely tear down your blocks 
You've been working for three days on those Legos. <laughs> three days. Three days. And somebody comes along and cooks them down. I would be kind of upset. I love Legos. Let's keep working. But you notice how I put it in a lighter Lego type of thing when I'm actually talking about us. I'm, I, I just put it in Lego so nobody wouldn't get boink. Would you like me to spell it? B-O-I-N-T, boink. And, and I actually put it in a Lego sense as in you're building something and somebody comes and knocks down your blocks. But even though they knock down your blocks, you still have to walk in love. Now, you don't have to eat breakfast with them and lunch and go hang out and go turn up with them. But you do have to love them with the love of the Lord. Anyway. Anyway. And that ain't easy. It ain't easy being cheesy, baby. But somebody can definitely do it. And it is you. And it is definitely me. Let's keep reading. But sin, which is a decision, that it, that, 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 that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. That sin, by the commandment, might become exceeding sinful. Now, the things that I get involved in, as I've said before, is my decision to do it. Nobody made me do it. Nobody coaxed me into doing it. I decided to do it on my own, and even the things I good are, and, 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 and even the things I do good are bad, if I so make them bad. Fourteen. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, and that's the problem with sin. When we are walking in the spirit, we can obey the spirit a lot easier if we pay attention to the things that are spiritual. But every time we come out of the spirit and get into the flesh or the carnal man, that's when all hell breaks loose. Because I'm able to hold down my flesh as long as I'm praying, as long as I'm fasting, as long as I'm keeping my, my, my mind on the Lord and the things of God, I can stay out of trouble just a little while. Just a bit. But the minute I forget about God and his word and the things that, that, that God has been saying, oh, you about to get hit up in the mouth. You about to get hit. You about to. <laughs> you possibly get hit in the mouth. But the minute I take control of that carnal man, I say, I'll tell you what. I know that you're talking to me nasty. I know that you're mistreating me with your mouth. And I know that you've been talking about me by around town. Oh, by the way, for the, are you watching? Broadcast World Partners, are you watching? This is for you. And this is for you folk in the building and in the studio. For those of you who think that you're so grown in Christ, get this, get this. Pin this to you. Pin it to your jacket. You know how they did you in first grade? Because you couldn't remember your mitts. For those of you who are not from the East Coast, the teacher pin, the, 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 the teacher preacher, the, <laughs> the teacher pin a note on your jacket to give to your mama. But the, so, so, so for those of you who think you're so grown in Christ, if you haven't gotten past the point of folk talking about you without you freaking out, you're still a child. Let's go back in. Oh, somebody say, I'm grown. Well, then when folk talk about you, let them go. Let them go because they're talking about you because they admire you. And they wish they can be like you. So all they can do is say bad things about you because they're scared to say it to your face. There you go. Does that make you feel better? All right. Let's go back in. 14 says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. And because I'm sold under sin, many times that's what I walk in. That's what I live in. That's what I act like I'm in. And if you get on my bad side, I'm going to slap you down. Instead of being spiritual, I'm going to say, I'll tell you what. Did you have a bad day? Because I don't have time for that. And I got to go. Because you see, there's a jail cell waiting for me if I jump on you. But in anger, sometimes we forget that there's laws about beating on folk, cutting on folk, hitting folks with bats, 
Shorten them. Shorten them. Ladies, by the way, if your man is smart, he'd have you arrested for hitting him. He can't do that. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can, ladies. Because if he's spiritually minded, he won't hit you back. Not because he shouldn't, but he won't. He's smart enough to say, I'm going to have you arrested if you put your hands on me again, baby. It's happened already. <laughs> 15, for that which I do, I allow not, Paul says in 15. For what I would, that I do not. What I hate, that's the stuff I do. The stuff I hate most, I hate sin. If you're a Christian, if you're watching, you're watching, are you watching? Are you, are you watching Broadcast World Partners? If you're a Christian, you're supposed to hate sin. Unfortunately, sin is always around. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the pimp, I mean Pope. It's always there. And the fight is ever present. It's ever present that we have to walk in the, in, in the spirit and not the flesh because if we walk in the carnal minded flesh we will act on the fleshly things and not on the spiritual things. And that too is a decision. Bishop Patterson is going to be proud of me with this because I'm dedicating this to Bishop Virgil Patterson out of California Crusade Christian Faith Center. Because it is a decision that I decide to walk in the spirit today. And because I walked in the spirit today, you don't have a black eye. Amen. Even though you hurt me so bad. Even though you cheated on me, I didn't shoot you. Oh, this is for somebody in here today because cheat is a big word in the world today. And don't you cheat it on me. But even in the cheat, I'm learning how not to kill. Because I still have no right to kill. Amen. I have no right. That I am not God. I, I am not supposed to kill. I'm walking in the spirit. I'm walking with God. So therefore, I've changed my mind and my heart on how I deal with situations. Is somebody get? Is this helping somebody today? Don't get spiritual on me. Don't get deep because you're not God. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And your decision has to be to move with God and not with the sin and the carnal mindedness that causes us to injure each other. Somebody in this building thought it was just a physical thing to injure somebody. Somebody watching probably thought that too. This is not all about beating on somebody in this room today. Did you know you can injure somebody with your mouth? Some of you don't have friends anymore because of the nasty stuff you said to them. And they decided to say, I tell you what. <laughs> I will tell you once, twice, three times, I'm not your friend no more. And if you come my way, I'm changing my cell phone number and my address. So, and I'm, oh, I'm blocking you off my Facebook, by the way. <laughs> so if you need help, you can't even find me on Facebook. And it's not always a physical thing. It's a verbal thing. Some of you thought that the things that you say because you're outspoken. Some of the most outspokenest people in the world cannot stand to be spoken to. Huh? You would tell you would set somebody straight in a minute. I can't believe it. Clear in the name of Jesus. Then they come back on you, but in the name of Jesus, you stink. Knock me, I don't stink. Yes, you do. Have you smelled yourself lately? Oh, wow. oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're quick to insult, but we can't take no insults. We're we're quick to criticize. But you can't criticize me. It's kind of one-sided, huh? Now I can decide to not be so critical of everybody. I can decide to not know it all. 
I can decide to walk in peace, walk in love. I can decide not to talk so much. I can decide not to insult everybody. Because the minute they come back with an insult on me, it's a fight. Now, which part of that is God? Oh, this is some good stuff, some good stuff. Getting me right today. I'm getting me right today. Somebody say, yeah, that's for you. No, it's for you. Yeah. I'm just trying to be nice by putting it on my toes. So hopefully some of it will fall onto your toes when you leave here today and a change might come because it is a decision. Everything we do is a decision in our minds and in our hearts. It's a decision to forgive. Did I put that on my list? I didn't say forgive. It's a decision to forgive, by the way. Oh, by the way, that's a curse word in the body of Christ. We don't forgive anybody. No, we say it out of our mouth, lip service. But I'm holding that against you for the rest of your my life. And your butt is in trouble. Because I'm not forgiving you. I said I forgave you from my mouth, but every time I see you, I want to fight. That's not forgiveness, by the way, saints. That's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is when you can see somebody. Now, 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 it's a decision. Forgiveness is when you can come into the presence of somebody who did something so bad to you and you can still love them. You can still walk up to them and say, how you doing? Now, nobody said eat lunch with them because you might hash up some old stuff. Nobody said eat lunch. Nobody said eat breakfast. Nobody said hang out. Nobody said any of that. But God said you got to love them no matter what, and that too is a decision. Ah, somebody's making decisions today right now. Every time we have one of these kind of messages, every time we have one of these kind of messages, somebody goes home and calls somebody who they know they needed to call. Every time we have one of these kind of messages today, somebody needs to be prayed with. To, you know what, you know what, you know what, you know what? I'm not going to sit up here and deal with deep Christians who think that you have arrived because you ain't arrived. Hello, how are you? And thank you for watching It's a Decision. And you know, I found out it really is a decision. The things that we do, the things we say, and all the decisions that we make for our lives in the life of serving our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching today because it is a decision. And may I ask you today, are you a Broadcast World Partner? We ask that you partner with us today as we take this word all across the nation. And remember, one thing we always say before we leave is when you get down to pray, don't get up right away, but listen.